Hello and welcome to another episode of Learn to Code Academy, um, the YouTube the YouTube video series. Um, yeah, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to code a local server um, for a comparable local client style setup for um, a network system. Um, so let's get straight into the tutorial. So basically, first you want to open a WPF, a new WPF application. Um, I'm using uh, Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition, which is really good actually. It's a really good um, IDE. It's it, the Community Edition features everything you pretty much need to make you know fully functional applications. But anyway, go ahead and click File New and Project, and go ahead and click that Project button in the menu. Sorry, my computer was a little bit slow when I was recording the walkthrough. Um, it's a little bit taxing, I think, when I'm screen recording as well as running Visual Studio, which is already quite a taxing, should I say, a resource-heavy piece of kit, so my PC does run a little bit slow. Anyway, if you go to Windows Classic Desktop on the left, and then click on WPF App.NET Framework, then you can click on Server, or should I say, write in Server on the field, and then click OK, you know, add your project, create your project. Okay, so here, the GUI, I've got a simple button, you know, just get a button from the left, from the um, WPF controls, put it on the screen, and in the properties, you can change the name, but what we're going to do is going to go to click the lightning button, click on the click event, and as you can see, um, there's already some code here, this dot main server dot listen for request. Um, you can go ahead and pause the video, uh, write the code in as you want, um, or you can follow through if you're quick enough, you want to see what I do. But what I'm doing right now is that I'm adding a new class because I'm going to separate the main server from the um, GUI, from the GUI code. And um, uh, this tutorial will actually assume a little bit of basic knowledge, so it's going the pace is going to be a little bit quick. And I hope that helps you guys as well, you know, you want to just get the information fast. So go ahead and write a new class, call it main server.cs or whatever you want it. And now here's the code, and I'll just walk you through it. First, you're going to need these namespaces. Um, in particular, you're going to need system.net, system.net sockets, and you're going to need these system.runtime namespaces. If you get an error as you add any of these namespaces, don't worry. Go to um, project, which is what I clicked at the top. You can't see it on the screen. And click on references. I think it's reference or references. Um, but the main thing to note is that you have to click project and just add those dependencies um, into your project. So, oh, sorry, it's not. Um, you have to click on project and then you click add reference. Sorry, you couldn't see it on the screen because I cropped it out on accident. So, apologies for that. When you added those dependencies, um, simply go to your code and add these fields add these fields. So we have a port number, you can give it any kind of placeholder uh, value. I called it, I gave it 12345. Add the, um, a private TCP client um, class, declare that, declare a listener as well, a TCP listener. You also want to declare a socket, I instantiated it at the top, as you can see. You also want to add a network stream and two background workers. Um, if you're not familiar with multi-threading, into your application. Don't worry, this is going to be some really simple multi-threading. Um, but I think my background worker 1 is actually deprecated. Um, only background worker 2 is in use and I see that towards the end of the walkthrough. But don't worry too much, you can still follow through with this and if you find that the background worker 1 code is not necessary, you can delete it because I think number 2 does it anyway. But as I make the client, it might be relevant. I'm not 100% sure, but just follow through with me. Bear with me. Just bear with me. You should be okay. This is background worker 2. This is the code for the background worker 2. So this is effectively the listener. This will listen for incoming pending requests to the server uh, and it will accept the request upon receiving one. And I put it inside a while loop and that will run indefinite, indefinitely uh, via the true statement, the true valuation. And this is a piece of code called listen for requests. Now listen for requests will instantiate the sockets. It will create the local IP endpoint. And I 
and yeah, it will effectively just create the connection I itself. It will establish the connection, and it will also fire the background worker to via the run worker async method. So here's the code out out here. You can pause the video, copy and well, you can't really copy and paste, but you can add it into your code. And I actually thought that oh oh before I continue, yes, go back to your main window once you've done that, your main GUI. And you'll see that I call for listen for requests. And that's why you needed that method there, that piece of code in the beginning. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't have an error anymore because you've created the method in the main server as long as your references are um, syntax correct. Now, I have written the code rather than done it live because of technical difficulties. But it also works out that it saves time. The video is a little bit shorter and you can literally just pause the video and you know, bang in the code that you want, get the result you want. I think this is quite a nice format, so you can look at the code out like this. It's almost like looking at it online on like a forum or something, but I'm showing you straight up in the video. So I'm going ahead and I'm building the project. I'm building it now, I've done in the video. And um, it takes a little bit of time because of the, um, because of just, it just takes a little bit of time. So yeah, this is a really simple example, um, actually. It's, you know, I don't deal with processing data, with processing data packets. I literally just, here I've just set up the request to, um, you know, to listen for requests. So in a subsequent video, I'm actually going to show how the client works, how to program the client. And um, I can also demonstrate that working with the server to prove that there is indeed a connection so that will be a subsequent video in the series so yeah it may take you a little bit long a little bit of time for it to build don't worry and here we are so that's my GUI and if I click on turn on server which I have done so okay that's gone through and now to show that it's actually running the code I pause the code as you can see just about here I actually pause the code and it will break. It will break at where it's running. And it should be at the while loop. It should be at the pending while loop where it's indefinitely listening for requests. It takes a little bit of time because on my PC, uh, even though it's quite a decent laptop, it's still a little bit slow when I was recording, I believe. But anyway, as you can see, uh, in my background worker two underscore do work, uh, it has stopped at the if evaluation if this dot listener dot pending so it's listening it's listening for requests and I'm just stepping through now and it's listening it's listening it's listening and it's not getting anything of course because we haven't written the, the client to send a request so it's just listening it's just listening it's just listening and there you have it that's the simple server um, I hope this was helpful for you guys and yeah feel free to leave a like a comment any feedback anything was going wrong with your version or if you need a little bit of help or maybe there's things I could do to improve my to my code uh, feel free to give me some feedback um, I don't think background worker one was used but it may be used or you know you may find something to do with it but for now this is the example and I hope you have a great day uh, thanks for watching bye bye